والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. One of the most dangerous characteristics or human qualities that we can associate ourselves with, which is indicative of our dissatisfaction with the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the quality of al-hasad, quality of envy. It is normally translated as jealousy, but hasad is actually envy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ Say indeed, my Lord has made all types of fawahish, sins, has made it prohibited, made it haram. Ma dhahra minha wa ma batan. What is apparent and what is secret or hidden. The scholars say, wa ma batan yani al hasid. What is hidden or what is secret meaning envy. The sins that are done internally that you can't see outwardly, but they are internal issues. Envy is a symptom of a lack of appreciation of our own uniqueness. Because when you are envious of someone, you're concentrating on the blessing that they have, forgetting about the blessing that you already have. So it's a lack of appreciation of your own uniqueness and your own self-worth while focusing on somebody else's. And in Islam, we are encouraged to be aware of our own vices. The religion of Islam encourages us to be aware of our own vices, our own ills, so that we can correct those things. As the scholars say, Nisful ilaj ma'rifatul illa. Understanding your disease is half of your cure. Understanding your disease is half of your cure. You already know that you're sick. That covers half of your cure. Right? As Sojourner Truth, she said, I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if they had only known that they were slaves. When you don't recognize your own illness, you don't recognize your own sickness, it puts you at a disadvantage. But when you recognize that you do have a sickness, you recognize your vices, you recognize your issues, your ills, it makes it even more easier for you to deal with those things because you at least know you have a problem. The greatest danger that envy puts us in, or the peril of envy, is that it makes us, or puts us at war with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna li ni'amillahi a'da. Qila man hum ya Rasulullah. Qala alladheena yahsuloon al-naz ala ma atahum min fadli. Ruwahu tabrani. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna li allahi a'da. Inna li ni'amillahi a'da. Indeed, the blessings of Allah have enemies. Subhanallah so profound. He said, indeed, the blessings of Allah have enemies. And so when a person is envious, you become literally an enemy to the blessings of God, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you become envious of someone else, you literally become an enemy to the blessing of God. Because the thing that you are envious of the person for is a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. So you are essentially not an enemy to the person, you are an enemy to the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu said, Inna li ni'amillahi a'da. That indeed the blessings of Allah, they have enemies. So some of the Sahaba said, Man hum ya Rasulullah? Who are they, O Messenger of Allah? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Alladheena yahsudun al-nas ala ma atahum min fadli. Those who are envious of people because of the blessings that Allah has given them. Those who are envious of people because of the blessings that Allah has given them. Qala ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala wa aslu hasad huwa bukdhu ni'matillah ala al-mahsud wa tamanni zawaluha 
Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said the essence of envy, the essence of envy is to hate or to detest the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon someone and desire that it be removed from the person. You don't want the person to have it. You're so envious of the person. This is not jealousy. Jealousy is something different. Jealousy is not as bad as envy. Envy is at the top of the food of the bad quality food chain, if I can use that term. Out of all of the human qualities that a person can possess, envy is by far the most, the most hated and the most um, deplorable of those qualities. So Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said that the essence of hasad, the essence of envy is to hate the blessing of Allah upon another individual and to desire that that thing be taken away from him. That the scholars, they mentioned that the maratib, that the levels of envy are four. And I'll end with those four, inshallah ta'ala. And I'll continue with this talk for the next couple of days, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. It's time for us to do some self-reflection, to look within ourselves, to understand why we do some of the things that we do. Some of the things that we do are based upon some of the qualities that we possess that we don't realize we have. And if this quality has crept into your heart, has become a part of your makeup, then there's something you know wrong with that picture and we need to fix that. And the only way that that can happen is if we start doing some introspection, some self-reflection. We start doing muraqaba, nafsiya. In Arabic it's called muraqaba. Self-evaluation, to evaluate yourself. Why do I hate this person? Why do I dislike this person? Why? There has to be something deeper than just, I don't like this person. Is it that we see something in them that we wish we had ourselves? And so as a result of that, we use hatred as a means, a smoke screen, to shield or to hide the hasad, the jealousy that we have, for, or the envy that we have for the person. We have to look deep within ourselves to find out why. Why do I dislike this person? Why when I see this person do I feel about them the way that I feel about them? You have to look deep within inside yourself because you have no control over what someone does to you, but you have control over how you treat other people. You don't have control over what someone does to you. Life is 90-10. Is, is Life is 10% what happens to you 90% how you respond to it. 10% uh, of the argument has to do with two people disagreeing. 90% of the argument has to do with the way you say things. Even in argumentation, people arguing with one another, it has very little to do with the subject that they are differing on. It has very little to do with that and much to do with how you come across and how you are presenting your argument, the comments that come out of your mouth. Life is 90-10. 90-10, meaning 10% of what happens to you, 90% of your life is based upon how you react. 90% of what comes to you in your life is based upon how you react, how you respond to other people. So the scholars, they say that hasad, that envy, it has four levels. There are four levels to envy. Number one, to many zawal al ni'ma an al mun'am alihi. Walau lam tantaqil lil hasid. Number one is to desire, to desire that the blessing be removed from the person that has it, even if the person that is envious doesn't get it himself. So he doesn't want it, but he also doesn't want you to have it either. This is the first level of envy. The person that is envious, he doesn't, even if he doesn't get it, he still doesn't want you to have it. Even though he knows he's not going to get it, he doesn't want you to have it either. Number two, It's to desire that the blessing be taken away from someone and for you to have it yourself. So the first one, he doesn't want the blessing, but he just doesn't want you to have it. 
He doesn't want you to have it, and but he doesn't want it himself. Number two is a person who doesn't want you to have it and they want it for themselves. The first one is the type of person that says, you know, if I can't have it, nobody can. If I can't have it, nobody can. He knows that he doesn't, he's not going to get it, but he doesn't want anybody else to have it either. The second person is that they want the blessing to be taken away from you and they want it all for themselves. They want it all for themselves. Number three, تَمَنِّيَ حُصُولُ عَلَى مِثْلُ النِّعْمَ لَلْتِي عِنْدَ الْمُنْعَمْ عَلِيهِ حَتَّى لَا يَحْصُلُ التَّفَاوَتْ بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِذَا لَمْ يَسْتَطِيعْ حُصُولَهُ عَلَيْهَا تَمَنِّيَ زَوَالَهَا عَلَى الْمُنْعَمْ عَلِيهِ Number three is that you desire <coughs> to have the like of the blessing that someone else has so that there is no distinction between <coughs> you and the other person. So, number three is that you want the same blessing that the other one has so that there's no distinction between you and them. You don't want anybody to be greater than you. You don't want anybody to outshine you. You don't want anybody to overshadow you. So you want the same blessing that the other person has so that no one overshadows you and no one, you know, outshines you. And if you don't get it, then you desire that it be taken away from the person. You desire that it be taken away from the person. And number four, what is known as al-ghibta. وَهِيَ تَمَنِّيَ حُصُولُهُ عَلَى مِثْلَ النِّعْمَ لَلَّتِي عِنْدَ الْمُنْعَمْ عَلَيْهِ مَنْ غَيْلِ أَنْ تَزُولَ عَنْهُ Number two, number four, is that you desire to have the same blessing as the person that has the blessing. You want the same blessing that they have, but you also don't want it to be taken away from them. And this is what is known in Arabic as ghibta, friendly competition. Friendly competition. You want the same thing that they have, even though you don't want it to be taken away from them. As the hadith, the Prophet wasallam said that there will be 70,000 people from his ummah that will enter into paradise without any punishment, without any reckoning. So the Sahaba begin to stew over who is this? Who are these people, these 70,000 from this ummah that will enter into paradise without any punishment, without any reckoning. So one of the companions by the name of Ukasha ibn Muhsan, he said, Ya Rasulullah, ad'u Allah an yaj'alani minhum. Faqala Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anta minhum. Ukasha ibn Muhsan, he said, O Messenger of Allah, make dua to Allah that Allah make me from amongst the 70,000. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, anta minhum. You are from them, Ukasha. Subhanallah. You are from them, O Kashan. So another man stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, ud'u Allah ya ja'alani minhu. He stood up and he said, O Messenger of Allah, make dua to Allah that Allah make me from amongst the 70,000. 70, he said, Sabaka ka biha, O Kasha. He said, O Kasha, beat you to it. Sorry. O Kasha, beat you to it. He was the first one to jump to make that dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his dua mubashara. Allah answered his dua immediately. SubhanAllah, this to show you that sometimes Allah can answer your dua soon as you make it, immediately. He said, oh Allah, oh Messenger of Allah, make dua to Allah that Allah make me from amongst the 70,000. He said, you're from amongst them, Ukasha. Another man stood up and he said, oh Messenger of Allah, wanting the same thing that Ukasha wanted, but obviously he didn't want that to be taken away from him. But he just wanted the same thing, friendly competition. He wanted the same thing that Ukasha had. So he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, make dua that Allah make me from amongst the 70,000. He said, Sabaka ka biha ukasha. He said, Ukasha beat you to it. Sorry. There was only one person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was answering dua for at that moment, and that was Ukasha. He did not answer your dua to make you from amongst them. So this is the fourth level of, of envy, and that is to basically friendly competition to want something someone else has but not for it to be taken away from them. You don't want it to be taken away from them. So there's no sin on you seeing someone with something and you desire it for yourself, but you don't want it to be taken away from the person. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا حسد إلا في الاثنتين That their jealousy is not permissible except in two instances. رَجُلٌ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بِكِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ A man who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for him to memorize and recite Qur'an. 
and you are envious of him, you want it for yourself, although you don't want it to be taken away from him. You wish that you could recite Quran like the person does. You wish you could recite or have memorized a Quran like the person does, but you don't want it to be taken away from them. And the second is Rajulun and Amallahu Alihi bil Mad. For Yun Fikul fi Sabilillah as a man who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with money, much wealth, and he spends in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you desire to have the same type of wealth so you can do the same deeds that he does, not that you desire to have the money like he does, and you want the money to be taken away from him because in your mind you believe that he doesn't deserve it. We don't get to determine the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distributes his blessings to his servants. That is not your call. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this person with light skin and bless you with dark skin, that's the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this person to be slim and bless this person to be heavy set, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for them to be your case. If Allah bless this person with money and bless this person to be poor, then, and notice I said blessing, because sometimes being poor can be a blessing. Sometimes being poor can be a blessing because if Allah gave you what he gave him, it would probably destroy you. It would probably destroy you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he mentioned in the hadith al-Qudsi, he said, Inni qasamtu ni'mati ala, ala ibadi bi ilmi bi kulubihim wa ana alimun khabir that I distribute my blessings amongst my servants based upon my knowledge of their hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what your heart can handle. And so he only gives you what you can handle. As Allah says in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما آتاها That Allah will not burden a soul with more than what it can bear. More than what he has given it the capacity to deal with, to endure. Allah is not going to put on you more than what you can handle. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not bless you with the wealth, with the riches that he gave to someone else, that is because he is not going to put more on you than you can handle. Maybe making you rich is beyond your pay grade, beyond your capacity, beyond what you can bear. And it will destroy you. There's a reason. And we don't get to determine who Allah blesses with what. So when you are essentially envious of someone, you are envious of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are a'da li ni'amillah. You are an enemy to the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't get to determine how Allah distributes his blessings amongst his servants. He said that inni qasamtu ni'ami ala ibadi bi ilmi bi kulubihim. That I distribute my blessings to my servants based upon my knowledge of their hearts. And I am all knowledgeable, all aware. I am all knowledgeable, all aware. SubhanAllah. So these are four levels of hasad. And inshallah ta'ala tomorrow we'll talk about some of the dangers of hasad and how it can destroy an individual. Bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salama tasliman kithira. Wa subhanaka rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.